Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Gyrus and welcome back once again to Let's Play Silent Hunter 4. Uh, it's May 28th, <clears throat> we've just finished syncing whatever that was that we got last time. Uh, it's been a little while since I played this. Yes, uh, 17,000 tons of whale factory ship, which is nice. Um, and we have to now patrol this area here. Um, so what am I going to do about this? Well, I'm thinking sticking to that nice deep water would be a start. What we might do is we might actually stick to the south of this patrol area and try and stay near this um, deep water in case we need to uh, skedaddle quickly away from enemy warships. But depending on how deep it is here, we might also stay in this kind of area here where we've got plenty of moderately deep water and I don't like this, this shallow stuff here. We've got to watch out for these islands as well. So we're going to try and give them a wide berth. Uh, I will probably stick mostly to um, to the uh, to the deep water. And we do have an airfield here, of course, which is going to be a huge problem. So the old uh, trick of staying submerged during the day is going to be definitely something we're wanting to consider sticking to uh, as much as we can. Um, Depends on the weather, of course. If it starts to get cloudy, I might stay. I might stay up during the day. But for now, we'll just do as we've been ordered and patrol around here. I will get back to you uh, once we have a bit more, uh, bit more action. Well, we haven't even got to our patrol uh, grid yet. Our circle here. Um, we're supposed to be uh, 11B is is where we're supposed to be patrolling. Now, we have right here a sonar contact which I'm definitely going to investigate. Uh, so we'll change course and have a look here. The weather, it's, I mean, it's the same day we sank that. Um, this is still the night that we sank that uh, whale factory ship. So we might end up getting two ships in in uh, one, one day. When did we, got a bit of news here. You can have a read of that. US Navy managed to bring the Imperial Japanese uh, Navy to a standstill in what is now known as the Battle of the Coral Sea. I think we had that earlier. I'm not sure when that, when that came through, but Yes, it was today. Tonight, we sank that whale factory ship. So we'll go and investigate this. Let's go up to a head full. Got plenty of fuel to kill, uh, to use up here. So let's let's investigate. Yes, sir. What do we have? Where are you going? Yes, sir, sir. We'll mark this right now. Right there. And we'll see which direction. Let's do a bit of time compression here. Yeah, it is heading towards us. Um, so we might try and intercept medium medium speed bearing three four two I'm not sure how far out it is but yeah kind of annoys me that you uh, you can hear so easily when you're on the surface because we are of course surface but I will um, I'll investigate I think it's probably going to be heading on a more or less that way direction it's probably heading more or less in the same direction that this oh I don't know actually this whale factory ship was heading towards it was heading um, more of an easterly direction. This one seems to be going sort of a southwesterly direction. Anyway, let's go and find out. There's only one way to, to know, and that is to actually go and investigate. So I'll get back to you when we have a visual. Okay, well, we have a visual here, and we have more than one ship. There are at least three contacts here. There's one that's still out of visual range, but another two that are in, in visual, and I'm 315 on now. Sounds like we've just relieved the, watch. relieved the watch here. And actually, this would be a good opportunity to go to battle stations we'll do now. That's two minutes coming up now. Um, so apparently these are going medium speed. I'm not sure what they are yet. They're too far away to, to get a proper visual on them. They're just dots on the horizon right now. But I'm turning in just slowly. I've slowed down. Uh, and I've also sent off to find out whether or not we are supposed to actually. Yes, here we go. Uh, so we've just got a message back. Attack enemy convoy. Whichever target is convenient, your discretion. Do not neglect your other responsibilities. Okay, so we are supposed to engage this this convoy, which is fantastic. So this is two and a half minutes now. Um, I'll do a little bit of time compression. I'm getting impatient here. And let's find out what, what speed they're going. Five seconds. And this should be right. I'll do this again later off screen to be... Um, there's the last one. And click. So we now have a approximate speed and also their exact course. Shh, it's okay. Um, so let's let's draw a line between these three. I think I might have to do this at at periscope depth to be just to be safe. 
because it is quite bright out there. I don't know if I showed you. I think I forgot to show you what, what are we dealing with out here. So we're barely moving because I'm in the middle of a turn and I've slowed the engines down to a crawl. But out there somewhere, we have enemy enemy ships. And as you can see, it's it's getting quite bright. I think the sun might be actually be on its way up because it's about 4.30 in the morning now. What time is it actually? No, it's 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. And that looks like, um, yeah, that looks like something worth, worth attacking. So we're going to going to go to periscope depth for this attack. We'll find out how fast they're actually moving. And then we might think about... So it's about eight knots. Eight and a half, yeah, eight knots, we'll say. So let's uh, speed up a little bit here. Let's go ahead standard. And then we can... hopefully go to periscope depth. Uh, Maneuvering at periscope depth is not much fun. So once we've straightened out a little bit, yeah, we'll, we'll do this now. Periscope depth it is. Gone to battle stations. All right, let's do this. We're gonna hopefully have at least two targets. We'll sink at least two of them, I think. I mean, there's no, they seem to be unescorted, so maybe we could even just use the tech gun and sink a lot of them, but we'll do this properly with the torpedoes and I'll just let them get a little bit closer. See if I can identify them all and get back to you very soon. Okay, I think this is a fairly small fleet. Um, well, a fleet of small ships, that is, is what I mean to say. I think that's a small oiler, I think. That looks to me like a coastal merchant. Uh, we have that set as a, is that right, coastal merchant? Yeah, coastal merchant, small oiler, and this I have no idea. We have to let it get a little bit closer before I can be sure. Um, but we are now just traveling at one knot, very slowly. Um, gonna, have to let, gonna have to let them get a little bit closer, but we can at least uh, set up the torpedoes, which, because we've got a variety of different ships here, I'm going to set everything for uh, contact if I can. Here we go, contact. Um, now, in reality, in this uh, at this period in the war, submarine commanders would not be using contact pistols. They were specifically told to use impact uh, influence. Sorry, um, and if they tried to tamper with them, which some commanders did, uh, they would get in trouble for it. They'd be reprimanded for it. They weren't supposed to. Um, and I am the sort of person who would probably follow the rules pretty closely, so I would be unlikely to actually set these for contact. But that's okay. We'll pretend that we'll pretend that some of the problems that with the Mark 14 torpedoes didn't actually happen. Anyway, I digress. We need to concentrate on um, getting a little bit closer, just uh, recognizing whatever this is. Uh, I'll cut the video for a while longer here because we're still a little way out. And they are coming almost straight for us, so we're going to get uh, we're going to get a much better visual on them uh, when they get a bit closer. I might as well drop the scope for a little while, just to be safe. Okay, they're getting a little bit closer now, so I think now is a good time to uh, to raise this scope. Um, Periscope discipline is not vital uh, when it's a dark night like this. I'm, I doubt very much if they'd see my periscope unless I left it up in broad daylight. Um, yeah, I think that's probably, a, uh, like I guessed earlier, that is probably a small oiler. We'll have another look. Uh, let's do some periscope discipline here. Let's just lower the, lower the, the scope while I'm doing this. I mean, it could be, there's so many new ships here, it maybe is not a small, a small oiler, but I, ugh, try that again. Not a small oiler, but it certainly looks like one to me. Um, so I'm thinking it could be that, of course, let's have a look. Fleet oiler, could it be that? Ooh, it could be, you know. Let's have a look at the rigging. Actually... I think that what that that's what that is there. I think that's actually a fleet. Yeah, I think that's a fleet oiler. So we'll change that. I'm still going to use uh, impact, however, because I just don't trust these magnetic. And that looks like something fairly, fairly large-ish. I'm not sure. It's I'm facing straight ahead, and I can't turn these, you know, to look at an angle. So it's hard to identify it. 
Um, but it looks like a fairly sizable ship. Artemaru, perhaps? Could be that. Auxiliary transport? No, it's... It's too, sm too small to be an auxiliary transport, surely. Then again, that bow does look quite similar, doesn't it? Hmm. What to do, what to do. Well, we'll keep we'll keep going. I'm gonna just enter this as a Alright, I'm not gonna worry about this now. I'm just gonna enter it as that for now. Even though I don't think that's what it is, because I'm gonna fire it these. I'm going to let this co uh, coastal merchant go, but I am going to fire at this oiler here, because I think that's a target worth shooting at, so we'll set up for an attack for that. Um, we know that they're going 8 knots, but I will I will set this up again, and we might as well just keep fil filming here. Why not? Um, click, and I'll try and keep a, a track of that clock, even though I don't think we've got time. It would be nice to be sure. So let's start to set up here. I really should drop that scope, shouldn't I? But we'll be fine. I think we'll be fine. All right, let's take a range mark for a start. They're, de they're definitely Japanese. You can see the flag there. Range mark. Let's get that out of the way. Come back, almost a minute now. Whoops, wrong tool. I'm always doing that. There we go. Angle on the bow is going to be 40 degrees in the moment. Thereabouts. Angle on the bow, 40. Let it go for a little while longer. I'm going to drop this scope just for a bit. And I'll let them get a bit closer. Let's do some time compression. So this is going to be... Two minutes. And then when we've got half a minute, I'll raise the scope again. So that's back to normal. Scope up. Hopefully we haven't left that too long. I don't think we have. Oh, perfect. That's, that's getting nice and close now. Just pull that back, because those waves are getting annoying. Hopefully we'll see better now. All right, let's go out of here. It's down there now. This should be three minutes now. Mark. We'll leave the scope up for now. Yeah, it's eight knots for sure. Let's see what the crew has to say. Uh, we'll keep that locked on. Um, what is the draft under this thing? We think, I don't know. I'm going to leave it at, at 10 feet. That should be fine. But let's take another range mark. Mark. Speed, seven knots. They're pretty close. Let's enter that at eight. Angle on the bow, have that again. Whoops. Angle on the bow, 57, 56 degrees. 56 degrees. We'll make it about that, 55. Okay. One more time. Range. Mark. Ask them the speed. Yep, I think that's a solution. Let's keep that now. Let's have a look at this. It's looking pretty close. The range is a little bit off, but I'm fairly happy with that solution. And of course, in reality, we wouldn't be able to tell exactly. Um, this thing is kind of cheating. I shouldn't really use this to, to check, but that looks pretty good. I mean, and good enough is, is absolutely fine. Besides, I'm going to put a little bit of a spread on them. Um, 
Shall we fire at that angle? I think we will. Could wait for them to come a little bit closer. Let's just have a look at this while we're, we're waiting. Where are you? That does look fairly large, doesn't it? I'm not sure what it is. I like the, the pattern on that one. That's really cool. All right, let's have a go at this. Open tubes one and three. You know what I might start to do? Is I might actually check the angle on bow for this, get this set up so we can quickly fire it uh, again. So that's going to be 50 degrees in a moment. We'll wait. We'll actually wait a little, a little while just before we fire. So I'm going to drop this scope just for a little bit. We're not ready quite yet. Tubes are open. Men are ready to go. But we'll watch this. Let's go to the attack map. So that's where we think the, the, the target is, and that's going to keep pretty well. Um, so I'll let it get a little bit closer. So back down to standard speed. Let's raise this scope again. Page up for the scope. Yeah, it's straight ahead of us now, so that should be fine. Let's have a look at this and see how well this is keeping. That's pretty damn good. I think the range is off, but I think it's absolutely fine. So that's locked in. Fire three. Sorry, we had a bit of lag there. I'm not sure what that was about. I was just uh, confused because suddenly an, a torpedo appeared in the water for reasons it didn't fully understand. Uh, anyhow, I'm babbling now. Let's put a spread to the to the right of one degree. Fire one. And now let's quickly take a, a look at this. I would like to see that explode, but we're not going to because I'm going to try and shoot at this one as well. 60 degrees. Oh, I hope that was right. 55 degrees. Lock. We still have that. Let's not keep that. We're going to guess that that's what it is. Whoa. Let's try again. I don't like the fact that we don't, we're not hearing any explosions yet. Mark. Fifty-five degrees, that's right. Speed eight. I think that we'll keep that. We've got an impact right on the tail. The other one might not hit. It might have missed. Let's try this now. It's now sixty something degrees. Let's say sixty. Sixty degrees. That was another impact. Open tubes. I can't re read that. Whatever that is, tubes two and four, I think. Um, let's take the the uh, range one more time. Range mark. Let's fix this. Fire four. And put this on a bit of a spread to say the left by let's say two degrees because I'm not entirely convinced that we're going to get this one. Fire two. And yeah, we, as you can see there, um, that's out at a bit of an angle, so we're unlikely to hit that. Although I've got a good solution. That is a pretty good solution. I actually prefer Silent Hunter 3 where you can actually look around with the periscope. So as you move this uh, here, that will actually move the, the, um, the target solution around. So if you lock on, it will follow it. And if you unlock, you know how it works. I mean, but in Silent Hunter 4, you can't do that. So it's actually kind of difficult to target more than one ship at a time. But these are looking pretty good. The main problem is the angle. Um, yeah. The main problem is the angle. He's doing a good job at evading those torpedoes. You can see them coming. Hmm, strange. Okay. I was convinced that we had them. We had them there. Go to the attack map again. That's one. One's going to hit. Got it. Okay, so we got one hit, the other one missed. Oh, wow. Kaboom. She's taking on water and going down. So we got one of them. As it exploded in a ball of fire. Uh, I don't think that that ship was what we were aiming at. But a pretty successful attack, uh, all things considered. We got three impacts. I think three out of two. Sorry, what am I saying? 
<laughs> three out of four, uh, which isn't too bad. Three out of four ain't bad at all. And that was obviously carrying munitions of some form. Um, yes, I, that should have been a dud in my opinion. But hey, we got the uh, we got the target. This one is is getting away. I mean, we could rise and use the deck gun at this point. It's a little bit choppy, but I think. Please shut up. This thing's still ticking. I'm sorry, that was ticking the whole time. I was concentrating so much, I didn't, I didn't notice it. Why won't you shut up? Thank you. Um, yeah, I do apologize for that because I realized that was going tick, 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 tick the whole time, and that must have been driving everyone insane. Wow, that went down already. That was quick. Bloody hell. All right. Well, let's drop this scope now and um, and think about getting a little bit of speed up and we'll see whether this other one goes down on its own. Otherwise, I'll probably surface and finish it with the deck gun. Okay, these guys are not going to go down, and I'm having trouble keeping up with them anyway, so let's uh, let's use the deck gun, shall we? Surface the boat. going to be a bit of a battle surface, so we'll see how we go here. We should have some... What will we aim for here? Aim for the hull. Come on, deck. We might as well aim for the hole. Um, and as soon as we've surfaced, I will set them to... Okay, we're up. We're heading up now. So let's get the men on the gun. Man the deck gun, please. We're still going ahead full, which is fine, because I'd like to cover that distance. I think they're totally unarmed, to be honest. Uh, let's have a look. How are we doing out here? see the man on the horizon there. They're just side by side and we'll do all this from from inside. Uh, there's a little bit of water lapping up on the on the deck but I think nothing nothing so much that we could say that this isn't good deck gun weather so let's uh, let's do this gentlemen you may fire at will yes, sir. and uh, yes, sir. do please finish them off for me. They should fire in a moment. Over there. Go on. Take a pot shot at those. I'm not sure why they're not shooting. Did I not? Oh, it helps if you put men in the in the gun. Sorry, I forgot about that. Jeez, that's that's not good, is it? Up a bit. That's more like it. I'm going to try and not use the deck gun myself too much because it's kind of cheating really to, to be using it. Um, but uh, I need to get a few shots in here. Uh, we are wasting... Wasting shots. Got a good rate of fire here. Let's get a few waterline hits, slow this one down. We are making a good 10 knots. And uh, that's pretty good, I think. Maybe one more shell, and then I'll let them do their own thing. This one is going down, just, yeah, definitely not going to last long. And this one over here has just completely exploded. We have a boat in the water, a couple of boats in the water there actually, and she's split in two. 
yeah, they're all they're both going down now. I think we can safely say that that is a success. Uh, well done. We used up most of our deck gun ammo, but that's okay. Well, if you're going to put ships in a convoy, this is why you need to give them an escort. We just took out three ships, four if you count last episode, four ships in uh, in one day, all on the uh, 28th of May. We managed to take out all of those those ships. So we've made a huge impact on the Japanese uh, shipping. Uh, those were mostly oil oil carriers, I think. So um, wherever they were going, let's I'm assuming that they were on their way to Formosa, mostly. Formosa is going to have a bit of a fuel crisis as a result of that uh, of that uh, attack. Now our munitions are running a little low. Let's have a look in here. If you look just here, you can see we're we're, we're running out of torpedoes, and we used up most of our um, most of our deck gun uh, ammunition as well on those uh, ships. But we got what we were aiming at, that's for sure. So I guess now we just need to head out to our actual patrol zone and use up what's left of our torpedoes. Then we can think of going home. Uh, this is very successful. We got a medium fleet oiler, composite superstructure freighter, and a small split freighter. So that's another, what, 8,000 tons-ish? Maybe 9,000? I'll, I'll calculate that up later. But anyway, we're doing really well is the important thing. And um, very successful day indeed. So. I guess next episode we will think about um, patrolling this area 11B. Until then, this has been Kairos. Thank you all very much for viewing. See you next time.